प्रताप प्रोटेक्टेड तक दोस्ती अभिघाती डिस्ट्रॉइंग रजा द मोड ऑफ पैशन तमा द मोड ऑफ इग्नोरेंस चर्च एंड सत्वेना ऑफ प्योर गुडनेस न unto us were they are bestowing all blessings tanu va by your transcendental form nirasya nirasya driving the way <coughs> please repeat the translation after me as well o lord o lord you are the personification of all religion of all religion therefore you manifest yourself in three millenniums and thus you protect this universe which consists of animate and inanimate beings by your grace which is of pure goodness and is the bestower of all blessings kindly drive away the elements of rajas and tamas for the sake of the devi gods and christ born for <coughs> purpose by the language that will bad e the lord is addressed in this verse as three yuga a word of appears in the three millenniums namely the satya dwapar and trita yugas he is not mentioned as appearing in the fourth millennium or kali yuga it is described in vedic literature that in kali yuga he comes as chana avatar or an incarnation but he does not appear as a manifest incarnation in other yugas however the lord is manifest is a manifest incarnation and therefore is addressed as three yuga or the lord who appears in the three yugas shri vishwami describes the three yugas as follows yuga means couple and three means three the lord is manifested as three couples by six opulences of three couples of opulences and that way he can be addressed as three yuga the lord is the personality of religious principles in three millenniums religious principles are protected by the three kinds of spiritual culture namely austerity cleanliness and mercy the lord is called three yuga in that way also in the age of kali these requisites to spiritual culture are almost absent but the lord is so kind that in spite of the universe being devoid of these three spiritual qualities he comes and protects the people of this age in his covered incarnation as lord chaitanya lord chaitanya is called covered because although he is krishna himself he presents himself as a devotee of krishna not directly krishna <clears throat> the devotee prays to lord chaitanya therefore to eliminate eliminate their stock of passion and ignorance the most conspicuous assets of this yuga in the krishna conscious movement one cleanses himself of the modes of passion and ignorance by chanting the holy name of the lord hare krishna hare krishna as introduced by lord chaitanya the four kumaras were cognizant of their situation in the modes of passion and ignorance because although in vaikuntha they wanted to curse devotees of the lord since they were conscious of their own weakness they prayed to the lord to remove their still existing passion and ignorance the three transcendental qualifications cleanliness austerity and mercy are the qualifications of the twice born and the deity gods those who are not situated in the quality of goodness cannot accept these three principles of spiritual culture for the krishna conscious movement therefore there are three sinful activities which are prohibited 
illicit sex, intoxications, and eating anything other than prasad, food offered to Krishna. These three prohibitions are based on the principles of austerity, cleanliness, and mercy. Devotees are merciful because they spare the poor animals and they are clean because they are free of contamination from unwanted foodstuff and unwanted habits. Austerity is represented by restricted sex life. These principles indicated by the prayers of the four Kumaras should be followed by the devotees who are engaged in Krishna consciousness. Om Gyanti Mirandasya Gyananjala Sharataya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manoya Vishtam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamaya Dadati Swapadantitam Vandeyam Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagra Ragunathan Vitam Kamsajiva Sadhavetam Savadutam Parijana Saritam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Deva Sri Radha Krishna Pada Sagra Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamstra Aradhi Bhagavan Vajeshatanes Tattam Vrindavanam Ramyatha Chirupasana Prajimad Vargena Taya Kalpita Shrimad Bhagavad Purana Madam Prima Kumar Komaat Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Matayam Nayatra Agra Paraha Navani Radhanindita Kanti Dharam Rasosar Nagar Bhupavaram Shubhavan Shikhanda Sikhim Vaja Krishna Nidhim Prajuraj Sukham Vaja Krishna Nidhim Prajuraj Sukham Radhika Sarodha Indu Nindri Mukha Mandali Vandiye Shri Pal Padma Rishvanu Nandini Vandiye Shri Pal Padma Rishvanu Nandini Vandiye Shri Pad Padma Krishvanu Nandini Ajahnam Vidujo Kanakaya Vidato Sankirtana Pitaro Kamalaya Takshu Vishwambaro Diyavaro Yugadharma Pala Vande Jagata Priyakaro Karuna Vataro Namaste Kiri Rajaya Govardhana Namine Pranapaklesha Nashaya परमानंद दाएं यसि अप्रसादा भगवत प्रसादो यसि अप्रसादा नगदी गुरुरी दयास्तवां यसि स्त्री संध्या वंदे गुरु हो श्री चरणा प्रविंदम हरे कृष्णा सो आई विल वेरी क्विकली रीड द ट्रांसलेशन वन मोर टाइम ओ लॉर्ड यू आर द प्रसादिफिकेशन ऑफ ऑल रिलिजन Therefore, you manifest yourself in three millenniums, and thus you protect this universe, which consists of animate and inanimate beings. By your grace, which is of pure goodness, and is the bestower of all blessings, kindly drive away the elements of Rajas and Tamas for the sake of the demigods and the twice born. <coughs> So my obeisances unto all the assembled Vaishnavas, especially to the senior Vaishnavas who are present, Shri Prabhupada disciples. May whatever emanate from my mouth be pleasing to all of you, to our Gauri Acharyas, <coughs> and to the wonderful uh, deities of Devinda. It is for the pleasure of the deities I attempt to speak something on this sublime subject matter. So, the 
this particular chapter about the Kumaras, the four Kumaras cursing the gatekeepers of Vaikuntha, Jay and Vijay, is being discussed for quite some time. But perhaps those who have joined online recently or today, or some of the new guests who have arrived, um, very briefly, when, Jai, when the four Kumaras reached the seventh gate of Vaikuntha, they were stopped by the gatekeepers, namely Jay and Vijay. And the four Kumaras were very upset because they were stopped. And they cursed Jay and Vijay, stating that they were not qualified to be in Vaikuntha because they were subject to duality. They saw good and bad, qualified and unqualified, as an example. So then they said that you don't deserve to be in Vaikuntha because these qualities of duality are, uh, are worldly or qualities of this material world, so you deserve to stay there. When Lord Narayana heard about this, he came running along with his consort Lakshmi Devi and he profusely apologized with a lot of humility, uh, stating that even if his arm had offended any of the Vaishnavas, he was willing to uh, slay his own arm if that arm had committed some offense. So like that, Lord Narayana pacifies the four Kumaras and then the four Kumaras start uh, eulogizing Lord Narayana in wonderful prayers that we find in this chapter. In the last verse, Mother Malti described the, how Lord Narayana uh, is being eulogized by the four Kumaras, even though Lakshmi Devi uh, is his consort, he is not as attached as the Tulsi leaves that, that uh, Lord Narayana is, uh, more than uh, he is to Lakshmi Devi. Because Lakshmi Devi is attracted to the opulence of Lord Narayana. And Tulsi Devi or the Vrindavan, gopis of Vrindavan are not just attracted by his opulence, they just love him because as it is, who he is. So that is one of the major differences between Vaikuntha and Vrindavan or Golo Vrindavan. So it's been made very clear that the position of Tulsi Devi is very, very high. Uh, and even Lakshmi Devi sits in austerities in, uh, in Bailwan, outside of Vrindavan, trying to get entrance into Vrindavan. Uh, but she cannot, because she cannot give up her opulence. So the main thing is, uh, one has to be able to give up all these things in order to obtain the sweet personality or the supreme personality of God in Krishna. <clears throat> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says in the Chaitanya Sistastaka, na dhanam na janam na sundarim kavita va chadini shakave mama janmani janmani ishwale bhavata bhaktir ahaitri tve. So what is he praying? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching us that if you really are interested in Raj Bhakti or Raj Prem, then one has to give up dharam, all kinds of material wealth, janam, all kinds of followers. And many, many people or even when those who are renounced, so-called renunciation is there, they become either the ascetics or sannyasis, but they are still attached to followers, uh, disciples, etc. So, now dharam, na janam. Janam means followers. Sundarim. Sundarim means attracted to the opposite sex. So these have to be completely given up. That is actually the, the definition of Chetu Dharmana Mahajanam. Chetu Dharmana Mahajanam that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mentions in the first verse is getting rid of all these anarthas. Then and then we can go through the Adho, Shraddha, Kata, Sadhu, Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, uh, Nishta, Ruchi, Asakti, <coughs> uh, uh, Bhav, and then we can attain 
Krishna Prema. So Krishna Prema is not so easy to attain if we are attached. Krishna, I love you, but there is a big beauty. So that is there uh, that has to be given up at some point if we really want to enter into the sweet pastimes of Avraj. Otherwise, it's not possible. So Lakshmi Devi cannot give up her opulence, and that is the reason she cannot gain entrance into into Vrindavan. Uh, so in today's verse, we find that uh, the Kumaras glorify Lord Narayana by saying that you are the personification of all religion. So. Uh, Lord Krishna or Narayana or any of his expansions, they are the personification of religion. Uh, uh, dharma to Sakshat Bhagavat Pradita. What is Dharma? Dharma is that which is Sakshat. Sakshat means personified. Lord Sri Krishna. That is Dharma. Shastra says that. Dharma to Sakshat Bhagavat Pradita. Or the word of the Lord. Non different. The word of the Lord, the Lord's paraphernalia, the Lord's holy name, the Lord's pastimes, they are non different from Him. Uh, and you protect this universe. He is indeed the protector of all. There's no doubt about that. That every moment He is protecting us as much as we deserve. Because the moment we try to uh, go against His principles of religion, then at that point there is no guarantee that one will be protected. But as long as one follows the principles of religion, one believes in the Supreme Lord, just like how Prahlad believed in Krishna, that yes, he is there everywhere. Ito narsino, parado narsino, yato yato yami, tato narsino, bahe narsino, rinae narsino, narsino, madim sharanam pramane. He is there everywhere. And he is in the pillar. Yes, he is in the pillar. So let me see if he's going to save me. Yes, indeed, my Shri Hari is everywhere. He's present. And that is one of the reasons why the Vedic uh, system or the, the Sanskrit word Vishnu. What does Vishnu mean? One who is all pervading. One who is present everywhere. Therefore, he's known as Vishnu. So uh, the Kumara says, by your grace, O Lord Narayana, you are pure goodness. And you are the bestower of all blessings. So, pure goodness means Shuddha Sattva. So, three modes of material nature that exist in this material world are a Tamogun, mode of ignorance, Rajagun, or mode of passion, and <coughs> Sattvagun, a mode of goodness. But there is a mode that is beyond goodness which is known as Shuddha Sattva. So, that's where the Lord and the Lord's pure devotees are situated on that platform. Saksha, Haritena, Samastha, Sastra, Ruptas, Tathava, Yata, Eva, Santi, Kinto, Prabhuya, Priya, Eva, Tasya, Vande, Guru, Ho, Sri, Chakta, Arinda. The pure devotee of the Lord, Vishnu Chakrati Thakur describes in the Guru Ashtakam or the Mangalati, in the seventh verse, <coughs> that the Lord and the Lord's devotees are, their quality wise, they are not different. So they are all situated on the Shuddha Sattva platform. And one was situated, and that is what even Arjun has been instructed by Krishna. Nistrai Bhava Guna Arjuna. Please go beyond the three modes of material nature. So what does transcendental mean? Means when one is situated on Shuddha Sattva or the pure goodness, just like Lord Narayana and his pure devotees. So they are praying to him kindly. O oh Lord Krishna, O oh Lord Narayana, please drive away this Raja and Tamagun for the sake of the demigods and the Christ Lord. Now this is a very interesting statement that they made. They already reached the realm of Vaikuntha. So there is no question of any uh, Rajagun or Tamagun, the mode of passion or mode of ignorance in that. As a matter of fact, there wouldn't even be a tinge of goodness or the mode of goodness. They are situated on the Shuddha Sattva platform or the mode of pure goodness. But in spite of that, they're taking a very humble position. That yes, we curse these uh, gatekeepers, it is not befitting 
for us to behave like that uh, and we realized that they had done such a thing which is uh, nothing but a product of Tavo and Rajagun. But again, it is not because it was a plan of Krishna that he needed to uh, and in every every Leela of Krishna there are multifarious reasons why he does even if it is a cursing of a particular entity or if it is his acting in such a way or, or making his pure devotees act in such a way. So, for example, uh, when we read the purport of his Divine Nishra Prabhupada in the Brahma Vimohan Leela or when Lord Brahma was attracted to his own daughter. But Lord Brahma is very exalted. One must not think that he is so fallen. We have no capacity to think like that. He is a part of Krishna's plan. Or Lord Shiva going, being attracted to the beautiful Mohini Murti uh, and running behind her. So how is that possible? It is only possible when Lord Krishna has a certain plan. So those, when pure devotees sometimes they take uh, they are willing to take voluntarily a bad name in the eye of the of the society that they will be condemned or they will people will start thinking adversely of them, but they are willing to be a part of Krishna's plan even at the expense of their own reputation. And that is what is Anupalila Krishna Anushilanam Tat Bhakti Uttam. In Narad Bhakti Sutra and in, in the uh, Bhakti Rasam Sindhu, Anya Vilasa Tashunya Gyan Karma Ravatam, Anukulina Krishna Anushinana Tat Bhakti Uttam. Uh, one should give up all kinds of, of, uh, of desires, zero, for Gyan and Karma. Then what is the positive thing that we should be engaged in? Anukulina Krishna Anushinana Tat Bhakti Uttam. Whatever is conducive to Krishna, whatever makes Krishna happy, uh, whatever gives Krishna sukha, we should be involved in such activities. So, uh, so that is pure bhakti. How do we know what will make Krishna happy? It's when we, when we please Krishna's devotees, when we please, please Krishna's pure devotees, when we follow their instructions, because they are none other than the most intimate associates of Radha and Krishna. In the, in the in the Krishna Leela, all our Gaudiya Acharyas are none other than they are very very intimate associates of Rupa Majari, Rupa Goswami, who is a very 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 dear sevika or a servant of Radharani. So all of them, uh, of course, once somebody asks Prabhupada, what is your position? Can you tell us? He says, if I tell you, you will think. <laughs> so he does not reveal that, but. Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Sasri Thakur Prabhupada is Mahina Manjali. Shri Gaur Kishwara Bhaji Maharaj is Guru Manjali. Shri Bhakti Lord Thakur is Kamla Manjali. Shri Vaishnava Sarva Bhoma Sri Bhak Jagannath Das Bhavaji Maharaj is Rasik Manjali. Like that we find they are all Narutun Das Thakur is Champaklata Manjali. Krishna Ashtaviraj Goswami is Kasturi Manjali. Loknath Goswami is Manjulali Manjari, Rupa Goswami is Rupa Manjari, Sanatana Goswami is Lavaka Manjari, Jiva Goswami is Vilas Manjari, Raghunath, uh, sorry, uh, 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 <coughs> Guna Manjari is uh, Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami is Tulsi Manjari, and Raghunath Bhatta Goswami is Rasik Manjari also. So these are all great personalities who are very, very involved in the intimate. Nikunja Yuno Ratike Siddhya Yaya Vivi Yukti Rapekshari and Tatra Pidaksha Ratima Pramasya Vande Guru Shri Chakaravinda. So these, in the, in the powers of, of Vrindavan, where the most intimate service of Radha and Krishna happens, they are involved, and that is why Kinto Prabhuya Priya Vatasya Vande Guru Shri Chakaravinda. And they are very, very dear to Radha and Krishna. So that is how we know what pleases them the most. Coming back to the main point here, that how do we know? What is Uttam Bhakti? How do we know that we are on the right path? It's not musical. When we read the purports of His Divine Grace, He has very meticulously given us so much information about Vrindavan, about the 
the, uh, the, the spiritual overseer of Bhakti Siddhas to Sri Prabhupada has given that information by translating the amazing Brahma Samhita, fifth chapter. Chintamani, Pragar Sattva, Sukha, Pavikshu, Lakshat, Teshu, Shuddhi, Ravir, Palayam, Tarlashmi, Sahasra, Shatta, Sambram, Sevivan, Govindavani, Purusham, Tamaham, Vajami. This whole Guru Vrindavan is nothing but all made of Chintamani, touchstone. Chintamani, Pragar Sattva, Sukha, Pavikshu, Lakshat, Teshu, we have millions and millions of, of desire trees. And Surdi Ravir Palin Tam Lakshmi Sahasrasta Sambram Sevimana. And Lord Krishna, the coward boy, the son of Nanda Maharaj, is tending to cows. This is the Supreme Personality of God. In order to understand that, if you tell anybody else, even outside of Krishna consciousness, or even outside of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Parampara, very few will accept that. That he is, all, all he does is he tends to cows or he takes care of cows. He's known as Govinda, uh, the one who gives pleasure to the cows. Of course, Govinda has more than one meaning. Go means cows, go means senses. He gives pleasure to the senses of the devotees. And that is why when we chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, it gives us the devotees a certain pleasure. Otherwise, it would become so boring repeating the same thing again and again and again and again for years and years and years. Why do we do that? Because he is non different. Now, Chintamani Sri Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vikraha, Abhindatva Nanda Namino. The name and the name are non different. So, we really practically find it through our practical experience that the Supreme Lord is present in his holy names. And it, it gives us, so therefore, he is known as Govinda. Govind means also, Go means Gopis, Go means Gopas. He gives pleasure to them. So, like that, there are so many different meanings of the word Govind. So, it is described that in this verse that he is not mentioned, the Lord is addressed in this verse as the three yoga. Three yoga means the three millenniums. What are they? The three millenniums in particular that are mentioned in the three yoga, Satya yoga. Treta uh, and Dwapra. So he is known as Tri Yuga. In Satya Yuga, he comes as so many different incarnations, including Lord Nishmadev. He comes as Lord Nishmadev in so many different. Uh, he comes in Treta uh, Yuga as Lord Ramachandra. And he comes in Dwapar as Lord Krishna himself and the Supreme Personality of God in Tri Yuga. So there are many more. But Prabhupada mentions very nicely and very meticulously. That he is not uh, mentioned as appearing in the fourth millennium, millennium which is known which is Kali Yuga, the present Yuga. Uh, it is described in the Vedic literature that in Kali Yuga he comes as Chana Yuga. So Chana in Bengali or in Bangla means uh, concealed. So he comes, but he comes as a concealed Yuga. So he comes as who? As a concealed Yuga, everybody knows that. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, he does not appear as a manifest uh, incarnation. In a manifest incarnation, everybody knows that he is the Supreme Lord. When, whenever, whenever the Lord appears in his own form or his expansion, that is what Srila Prabhupada means by saying manifest. So there is cognizance that he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead or he is a Personality of Godhead. That cognizance is there. That awareness is there. But in Chana Uta, uh, most of them, they do not know that he is the Supreme Personality of God and the Son of Nanda Maharaj who has come uh, from Guru Vrindavan, the Son of Nanda Maharaj. So, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu even sometimes, when somebody said that, oh, you are the Supreme Personality of God, and he would become very upset and, and shut his ears. But he would only reveal that to his most intimate devotees, like in the Shiva Sangha in the house of Srivas uh, Acharya, where he would display his Vrindavan pastimes, his own personality, he would, he would completely show that. But otherwise to the world, he was simply a devotee who taught his own devotion. Therefore, he is known as Chana uh, So, uh, he is not a manifest incarnation. The, in, in the other yugas, however, the Lord is manifested, is a manifest incarnation. And therefore, he is addressed as three yuga, or he is known as the personalities who appear in the different three 
in the different three millenniums. And Bhr. Prabhupada quotes Sri Swami in this particular passage um, the, in the purport. Sri Prabhupada very, very fond of two great personalities, uh, especially Sri Swami and Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. And of course, he would quote Sri Bhakti Guru Thakur and even his Guru Maharaj. But these, they are authorities. Sridhar Swami is an authority of Srimad Bhagavatam. One time, when Sri Vallabhacharya, he came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and said, I have written a commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam. Please, I would like you to read it. Or in other words, he was saying that I want you to endorse it. So most of the scholarly people, or those who are situated on that platform, of high scholarship, they always need recognition. There are some examples, other examples like Keshav Kashmiri. When he came, he went all over India and he wanted the, the uh, declaration. And he would go to different scholars and debate them and win. And if somebody did not want to debate him, he would say that you just accept me as I am the highest scholar. So like that, and then uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu humbled him by defeating him in a debate. So Sri Vallabhacharya had was actually he was a Gaudi Vaishnava, uh, Sri Vallabhacharya. And today we find that uh, Srinathji or Gopalnathji is under the the uh, followers of Sri Vallabhacharya, who very nicely uh, served Srinathji. Uh, but of course, again, here also this is a leela. One should not consider him as an ordinary mundane scholar. He himself is none other than an expression of Srimati Radharani, uh, Sri Vallabhacharya. So, but this is just to prove one very important point that scholarship should not, should not be uh, a, a uh, what you call, uh, a impediment to pure devotion, and which it is. So when he came, Mahaprabhu was none other than Paramatma was super soul in everybody's heart, he knew his intention. He said, uh, there is no need of another commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam. Sridhar Swami has is, is given, it's sufficient. And, and he also quotes a very, very, uh, what is it called? It's called a pun, is it, in English? When there is a double meaning of, of one particular sentence or word, it's called a pun. So he quoted a pun. He said that, Swami da Mani de, a Vaidri Chakrabi. One who does not accept Swami or a husband is certainly considered a prostitute. <laughs> Very harsh words. So, in other words, he also said, Swami da Mani de, meaning if you don't consider Sridhar Swami, then you know, you are as good as, uh, you know, a, a prostitute. In other words, that, you know, you're not accepting the, 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 the supremacy of a great devotee like of Sridhar Swami. So, it's like another Vastu, if I may uh, say so, if somebody who is in his corn and says, we do not accept Prabhupada, or I do not accept Prabhupada, is another Vastu what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was trying to say, that hey, you don't want to accept Sridhar Swami, I have accepted Sridhar Swami. And again and again, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu quotes Sridhar Swami in many, many of his purports. So here Sridhar Swami is highlighting the fact, how is it, then Krishna is known as three yuga in these three millenniums. So he says that yuga, yuga means uh, two, two. Jugala Murti Deki, Bhakti Rathakur in his Bhajan Shuddha Bhakta Charanda Renu. Charanda Renu, what is it, the next? Shuddha Bhakta Charanda Renu. Bhajan Arukula, thank you. So in that, in that uh, he says, Jugala Murti Deki Amora. Uh, so when I see Juga, Juga means two. Uh, Juga means Radha and Krishna. So as an example, Juga means two. So when he says three Yuga, means the opulences of Krishna are six in nature. What are they? Uh, the most beautiful, right? Unlimited beauty, unlimited faith, unlimited strength, unlimited knowledge, unlimited renunciation. What is the sixth one? I'm missing one more. Wealth. Unlimited wealth. Thank you. So. It's three times two is equal to six. So that's how, because these, when they come in these three yugas, they have the, the, or they, they display their full six opulences, and therefore three times two is equal to six. Three, three yuga. Yuga means two. 
3 multiplied by 2. Very beautifully explained by Sri Swami. Therefore, it is also known as Kri Yuga. The meaning of the word uh, Yuga means a couple, a twice. So, the Lord is the personality who protects religion, and in the three millenniums, he comes Yadayadai, Dharmasya, Grandi, Bhavati, Bharata, Abhitana, Dharmasya, like that. In, in Bhagavad Gita, he comes Abhitana, Dharmasya, Tadatmani, Sajjavya, Parikrana, and Sadhana, Vinashaya, Jibhushkata, Dharma, Sansta, Parthaya, Sambhavami, Yuge Yuge. So, to protect religion and to protect the, 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 the safety personality, I come millennium after millennium. But it's just that, that the three yuga means why the word is being used, Sambhavami, Yuge Yuge. Millennium after millennium means that after these these four yugas or the three yugas, they are complete, then again they re, they, it's a repetition. So that is why it is known as Yuge Yuge. Uh, it's a non stop cycle. So once uh, Satya is finished, Treta appears after Treta, Dwapar appears after Dwapar, Kali Yuge, then again Satyu, again Treta, again Dwapar. Again, Kali. So it's a cycle that keeps happening until the lifespan of Lord Brahma. So in this age of Kali, there are three requisites that, that, that are mentioned in spiritual culture and they are absolutely absent. And what are they in the, that are present in the three other, uh, other millennials? Austerity, cleanliness, and mercy. Right? Austerity is tapasya, cleanliness is socha, and mercy is doya. Uh, so that was represented in those three millenniums. But in Kali Yuga, that is almost extinct. We don't find that. And that is the reason uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to help us with that. Uh, to become, make, to make us devotees. Uh, that is the reason why, that was his external reason, of course, that he appeared. So Chaitanya, Deva Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is called the Chana Uta. So the four Kumaras were cognizant of their situation of their modes of passion and ignorance. So I mean, again, it's a humble position that they are taking because they saw that Lord Narayan himself is taking such a humble position that, you know, we should also take a humble position and they kind of admit that, oh, we shouldn't have cursed. They are your associates. But of course, little we, do we all know that Krishna has always some plan. He wanted to exhibit his, his, his medal of chivalry or the virulas. And of course, he had many other reasons of delivering many souls and protecting the sadhus in the form of protecting Prahlad from Hiranyak Kashipu. So Hiranyak and Hiranyak Kashipu were none of the Jain Vijay and Satya Yuga. And in Treta Yuga, it was uh, Kumkarna, Ramana and Kumkarna. So he came as Lord Ramachandra to protect the sadhus and to protect the burden of the earth. And then Shishupal and Dantavakra, uh, Krishna uh, killed them in the uh, in the Dwapar Yuga. So to protect religiosity and to come, of course, the Mahabharata was an integral part of uh, Dharma Shetri Guru Shetri. So to, to in order to protect them. So those who are not situated in this Prabhupada mentions in the in the mode of of goodness cannot accept the three principles of spiritual. Culture. So it's so important to be situated first in the mode of goodness. Although the mode of goodness is material, but we have to slowly and gradually uh, graduate from Tamo to Rajo, Rajo to Sakabur, and then we can finally, uh, post graduation would be would be Shuddha Sakabur or in the mode of pure goodness, as mentioned. That is one of the qualities of the Supreme Lord. So, uh, for, for that reason, Sri Prabhupada mentions in our Krishna conscious movement, therefore there are three sinful activities which are prohibited. Actually it's four, but here Prabhupada in particular lays stress to three. What are they? What are they? Illicit sex, in, uh, intoxication, and eating anything other than prasad or food offered to Krishna. So basically, it obviously means no meat eating. Anubhulena Krishna Vishnu means Sometimes some of the most ignorant people in India, they say, oh yeah, 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 I'll be aware that you can offer a tulsi leaf on anything and Krishna will take it. So let me put a tulsi leaf in my in my glass of wine and offer it and then I can take it as Krishna. Uh -huh. But Krishna has defined his, uh, what, is, what is the definition? What categories he loves? Patra Pushpam Tavakpoya. The 
whatever you offer that in that category you will love, I will accept. So one cannot offer meat or anything else that is not in the mode of goodness to Krishna. So it is very clear. So these prohibitions are based on the principles of, of austerity, cleanliness, and mercy. Meaning, meaning uh, illicit sex, intoxication, and eating anything other than prasad is based on the three principles of austerity, cleanliness, and mercy. Mercy and devotees are most merciful. Shri Prabhupada says at the end of the purport because they spare the poor animals. It's amazing how Prabhupada and the, the thing is that compassion is just not for human beings. Compassion should be for everyone. That is the whole principle. Vasudev Kutumba. Everything is Krishna's. So that is that is the reason why that compassion should be extended even to the lower consciousness animals. Supposing it is one of family or if you have a child that is that is say uh, uh, handicapped or mentally handicapped uh, would you be compassionate to that child or would you show non-compassion to that child and beat that child up or do harm or would you show a lot of compassion? So similarly, because that, that little child doesn't have that much cognizance or is not situated well, you know, like others in consciousness, then it is still our child. So everything belongs to Krishna. And we have to make sure that we extend our compassion to, towards that. And that's the reason why we don't eat meat. It is not that Prabhupada just had a, had, had a dream. There's no meat eating, no illicit sex, no intoxication, and no gambling. This is Shastra as it is. Striyam dukam manam shunam yantra dharma So Prabhupada is quoting Shastra as it is. Striyam means illicit sex. Dukam means gambling. Panam means meat eating. And, uh, uh, and shunam, the panam means intoxication and shunam means meat eating. So these four are against the religious principle. Yatra a dharma, dharma and other chaturvita, these four. So one should avoid that. And that is the main principle that we do follow, and then that way we can very nicely progress in our spiritual life. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. This divine Krishna Prabhupada. Yeah. Ananda Bodhi Vaishnavanda. Yeah. Ramdras Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah.